In this video, I'm going to lay out a roadmap to show you how to become a blockchain developer in the next year. I'm going to talk a little bit about the different roles within the blockchain sector, with main focus on building smart contracts and integrating them with web free front ends. I'm going to discuss the choices you have when choosing a blockchain to work with, and which one is most suited to different use cases. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the different tools you need as a blockchain developer to deploy smart contracts onto a blockchain. And then I'm going to talk about free learning resources where you can practice coding and develop in a safe environment. At the end of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit about connecting with the blockchain community via hackathons and community events, and some of the jobs available in the blockchain industry. In much the same way as traditional web development teams are separated into front-end developers, which build the website and mobile applications, and back-end developers, which build the databases and the server functions, blockchain has a similar system between web free and smart contract creators. Web3 engineers will build out the in-browser functionality to connect digital wallets and send transactions to and from the blockchain, and also be responsible for building out a decentralized application, which normally manifests itself in the form of a desktop website. Then smart contract developers build the code which runs on the blockchain, and this isn't like any other development I've seen anywhere else. Some people have likened it more to kind of hardware and circuit board development, and that's simply because there's literally no room for mistakes. You can't have bugs in your code because you can't roll out a hotfix once the code has been deployed to the blockchain. So the normal process is quite slow with a developer agonizing over every line of code before building up lots and lots of different unit testings and running fuzzers and linters on that code to make sure it's absolutely perfect and there's no bugs or edge use cases which could cause loss of funds. Once they're absolutely happy, they might get a third party audit on that code before migrating it on chain. Once the code's on chain, their work is essentially done. They can't change that code. They can't roll out an update without changing the contract address, which means everything else has to be changed and users' funds have to be migrated. Web3 developers will generally use a modern framework like React or Vue, and then a Web3 library, which all runs on JavaScript. Smart contract creators will generally use a blockchain-specific programming language, and they're spending a lot of time in a text editor and a terminal. One of the decisions that you have to make fairly early on is which blockchain to use. Different blockchains use different programming languages and have different quirks and ways of storing data on chain. There are two main options here which I think are worth considering. One is Solana, and the other one is Ethereum, and Ethereum with compatible blockchains. You need a compelling reason to specifically focus on Solana. I think the main ones are if you're trying to raise capital and you want to target some of the venture capitalist firms working in that ecosystem, such as Alameda and friends. And the other thing is if you're building an application that really de demands that high transaction throughput that Solana delivers. For everything else, there's Ethereum. Ethereum has become quite expensive to use and build on, but that same code can be deployed to alternative chains such as Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, Polygon, Phantom, and also the layer twos that we're seeing emerging now, such as Arbitrum, Optimism, and ZK Sync. If you don't have a specific reason to build on Solana, then I think you should focus on Solidity, which is a smart contract language for Ethereum and all these other Ethereum compatible blockchains. So can I learn Solidity as a first programming language? Well, in theory you could. I always advise people to learn JavaScript first. There's a few reasons for that. One is that you're going to need to learn JavaScript anyway. A lot of the migration scripts and all the web free stuff is all written in JavaScript, so you're going to need to know it. And the other thing is that it's much more versatile language. You can use JavaScript for literally anything. You can build mobile apps, websites, desktop applications with it. It's JavaScript is everywhere. And if you decide that you want to move outside of the blockchain space, then that'll be useful whichever industry you go into. With JavaScript, there's an absolute library of resources and books and online videos on YouTube. And if you want to know something, you can just Google it. And there's likely to be a Stack Overflow post with some example code in it. Once you've got to grips with JavaScript, that'll give you a great foundation layer to start specializing in something like Solidity development for blockchains. So what tools will you need as a blockchain developer? Well, the first place to go is remix.ethereum.org. This is an online IDE or integrated development environment where you can build your own smart contracts. It has everything you need in one place. So if you go here and you create your own workspace, we can create a simple file. We'll call it hello.sol, .sol is for Solidity. We can copy the base out of one of these other files. And we can edit this to create our own smart contract very simply. Once we have our contract down, we can go in, we can compile the contract. 
if Chuck throws up an error, we can fix that, recompile, then we can go to deploy the contract. We can then deploy that contract to a local VM, or if we want to actually deploy that to a real blockchain, we can use injected web free and connect the digital wallet such as MetaMask. This will be needed to pay the transaction fees, but we can actually get free transactions on something called a testnet, which we'll discuss later. Once you've got used to working with smart contracts in Remix, then you can move to an offline development environment, such as using Hardhat or Truffle. My personal preference is for Hardhat, and this includes everything you need to build, test, and migrate smart contracts onto a blockchain while working from them using a normal text editor such as VS Code. All the scripting within Hardhat is written in JavaScript, which brings back to that point that you're going to need to know a little bit of JavaScript to make, bring all the pieces together and make this work. Let's look at some free resources where you can learn Solidity development. The first one and my favorite is Crypto Zombies. This is like an online gamify tutorial where you create your own zombie factory and it's kind of got elements of like NFTs and there's a little bit of web free work as well that goes into it. And it's a really fun online course where you get to go through each lesson individually, building out smart contracts and learning about how Solidity works and what's possible working within a blockchain environment. Another fun one is Capture the Ether. So it's quite difficult and it's a little bit dated now as well but it's a fun kind of security focused challenge where you basically have exploitable smart contracts and you have to go in and capture the ether by exploiting them using Solidity vulnerabilities. It's an interesting way to learn about Solidity security, which is gonna be important if you be handling digital funds. Then we have documentation, which is something you're gonna to have to read through and refer back to if you wanna really master this. There's no way of really getting away from it. If you wanna get really good at Solidity and web free, then the documentations have information which just isn't available anywhere else. And then finally, there's YouTube, and this is a shameless plug for my channel, which you should definitely subscribe to. But there's also things like Eat the Blocks, The App University, Elisa Tech, and lots of other channels which focus on blockchain development. And it's a great way to learn, but also get a feel for what people are doing in the industry. Now, if we go back into Remix, I'm just gonna tie this contract up a bit. And let's recompile that. And deploy it to our VM, local VM. Now I'm gonna show you how we can deploy it to an injected web-free testnet. And what testnets offer is a duplicate of the main network. So for Ethereum, there'll be an Ethereum testnet, which is just the same as Ethereum, except for the fact that the ether isn't worth anything. So it's almost like a playground for developers to build on when there aren't any financial implications. So as long as you're using a different wallet address, the one that stores your main funds, you can't do anything too badly wrong. And you can also get testnet ether and testnet tokens from a full set, such as this brilliant one from Paradigm, where you just sign in with Twitter, put in your address, and they'll send you a bunch of tokens for different testnets which you can build on. So let's change the environment here to injected web free. So this is connected to MetaMask and we're connected to the Coven network out here, which is one of the Ethereum test nets. And I've got some token and I've got some Coven ether to pay for the transaction fees in my wallet. Let's now deploy this contract, sign the transaction. And then we have our deploy contracts here and a contract address, which is quite important. We'll copy that. You can see we've got this function, my var, because this public string function provides a getter function, which will provide the data which we've stored on the blockchain. So we've essentially stored a string or some text data on a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. Another really important tool that you'll be using quite a lot is Etherscan. And we can go down and select Coven Test Network, which is just coven.etherscan.io, paste in that contract address, which we copied from Remix. And here you can see a list of transactions, which is currently just the deployment of the contract. If we wanted, we could verify this contract by supplying the source code, and then we could execute functions from Etherscan as well. We also use Web3 within a web browser to connect to this contract and get the data that way. Note there's no cost to get data from the blockchain, but there is a transactional cost whenever you deploy a contract or you modify data and store new data. Obviously with testnets, that doesn't matter as much because the transactions and the native token doesn't hold any real value. Finally, let's talk about some of the opportunities within the blockchain sector. I think one of the biggest opportunities, both personally and professionally, is the blockchain hackathon events. 
No one runs a hackathon like the blockchain industry does. These are normally elaborate affairs. I remember EOS once hired out the entire science museum for an evening, and there's often tens of thousands of dollars in prizes up for grabs. And you can go there and you can code and you can learn about how different blockchains work, and you can learn a lot and meet new people, and it's just a really great way to kind of integrate within the community. For anyone looking to raise funding, these are also places where VCs scout and there's often grants available for teams working on building something which takes more than a couple of days. Then there's the community meetups and conferences. The conferences tend to be a bit more business minded and people are there to work, whereas the meetups tend to be more informal and everyone's just kind of meeting and gathering and talking shop. Both are great for different reasons. If you see a local meetup or a local conference in your area, it's well worth popping along to because it will give you a feel for where the industry is and where it's going. And then the final thing I want to talk about is blockchain jobs. I know that blockchain hasn't been around that long, so no one's got kind of 20 years mastery in this field, but the average kind of senior Solidity developer with a few years of experience of building smart contracts and maybe some past experience at a notable project will be earning in excess of 200,000 US dollars a year. Almost all the work now is remote due to COVID and teams are scattered across the globe. One of the downsides of working in the blockchain sector is it has a kind of cyclical nature. When we're in the middle of a bear market, no one's really interested, there's no money flowing into the space, and there's not many jobs going around, or work, new projects being created. Where in contrast to this, during a bull market, there's a lot of VCs pumping money into the space, and all the developers have already got rich and doing their own thing, so there's a shortage of talent, and there's no shortage of jobs for blockchain developers to go out and work on a contract basis or a full-time permanent basis with one of the big companies in the space. What I'd say is if you're looking for stability, look for a project that's been around a while and has good funding and long-term ambitions. I hope that you found this blockchain developer roadmap interesting and it's provided some value. Consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and thank you for watching.